I'm very interested, so if I can maybe get the first question in. Very interested in what you're talking about with the blockchain and qualifications and how, as schools, there's all the, the other things that are, yep. that are going on. You know, I suppose the character traits and that 21st century skills, how we can, you know, what we can do to, I suppose, legitimise those with, with qualifications or even the badging as you're talking yep. about. So, I, yep. Could you talk a bit more about the blockchain and where that might go? Well, the blockchain is a technology which um, will capture, um, it, it was built around the finance sector and it would capture finance and contracts in a way that is, think about it being locked into um, a place and time which is visible everywhere. So, and, and through that, um, it enables, uh, and, and there's quite, I can't answer the questions about hacking and all the rest, but this is not about our system that we have now, it's a, a technology approach and platform for the future. So, so what it is, is when you have participated, and Francis is, is um, offering the Tech Futures course, and they are using blockchain to capture your participation. Now they're working, and maybe I should put a perspective. We had Don Tapscott here 18 months ago, who is an educational futurist, and NTQA brought him out, and we worked across the government sector, trying to get the conversations going, and it was a very good time, a very good productive session. And Don said, uh, this will be a new technology, you probably haven't heard about it, but it's going to change the world. And we sat at dinner with him, and he was talking about the finance transactional side, and we started talking about, but what about qualifications? What about capturing that? And for him, it was a sit-up for him. Now he, his son, a whole lot of people now have done a whole lot of research and work on it. And this, and we've now got a collaboration with MindLab, NZQA, three months to look at how, three months as a company here in New Zealand, looking at how we can get this working. So that's something that we could, I'd certainly say for you, you know, this audience can put you in touch with three months who would love to work with you on that sort of project. And last week at Tech Week, they had a whole conference on blockchain. Um, and so that it can be an in parallel, because there is a parallel in universe going on through this next period, which is here will be the NZQA um, quality assured quals, but here are your other things. So here is the story of me. And I think thinking about badging and thinking about what is the verification that is useful for your kids when they go out. So if they go to Epic and all the people at Epic, I mean, Roger's here, Denison's here, it's not, you don't want a badging that means nothing. They came, they hung about, they didn't really do anything. It's like, if they really worked with you and you said this kid has got amazing whatever, you will vouch for it, and it's part of their record. So there's, qu and, and some of you heard me speak before is, so start thinking about, you said that, I thought you were a load of crap. I don't think that, Thanks. sorry. <laughs> so how did, Think about how we work in Airbnb, think about how we work in Uber and how we work in something else I just did the other day, which was uh, chatbots in terms of all of the chatbot service, you know, which is where you go on Kiki K and you buy something at midnight and you get stuck and you talk to, you think it's a person, but it's actually an artificially intelligent system. And it will solve, solve your problem in two minutes and you've made the order. I did that so I can verify it. And at the end is, how did that go? Five stars. Not how did it go when you shop on Torpedo 7 and it takes you five minutes to go through the questionnaire and do I want to buy warehouse vouchers and all the rest. So there's a whole bit in it of the technology to capture the quality of the thing and how do we assess the quality because it's a two-way partnership. So there's a lot to develop, but think about how you could use it and it could be around those characters that are something that, as a school or collection of, collection of schools, 
you've decided we're going to think about that. This is what we're going to do. My view, are we recognising the value of it? It's coming into the conversation. So if I put an NTQA hat in, on, I think we at a board level, executive, senior exec level, we are recognising that as essential. So it's, it's not maybe, but in terms of a system recognising that, that's got to be MOE, that's got to be all the players and having confidence in it, I think we've still got a long way to go. Which, and, but if you look at what you just described, the, and you look at the digital natives, that type of conversation is way more relevant, I mean, way more frequent, which is, I can't be bothered doing that. Why do I want to be there four years, I get it the, out at the end, and what I've done is out of date. And the guy that's teaching it, or the woman that is teaching it, has been teaching it for that long, and are they actually at this, the front end, and where the student can, knows more about it than the person. So that's, again, my vision. That is what it is. And there will, there are places, there was deep subject matter knowledge. But actually, that's, you're going to participate in this for a while. Deep subject knowledge that can move on to this. You've got the attributes to be able to move. You can get into deep subject knowledge. So there will be that at a, Qualify, you know, a participation, PhD, deep subject knowledge. But the, if you look at it as the paradigm we look at at the moment, I think it will be far more the bits and pieces added together. Well, well, so I'm not the policy setter, and I mostly work in the private sector. So when I use fear... I talk of collective fear and momentum. Uh, when when uh, we are working on digitisation of exams, and remember, that's the first step is paper to digital. That's not the transformation. The transformation is... What are we assessing? How do we? Do we even need external assessment? Oh, there's a whole lot of things. But when you start going from here to there, you actually open some other conversations. So I don't have fear, but collectively we have a lot of inertia to move this system. So I'm not in a moment being arrogant to say anyone here has, but actually we've, there's two things. One is we've got to work together. This is our problem. Uh, the second is, which goes back to your question, and if you look at even what we're doing at NZQA, if you look at what we're doing with blockchain, if you look at what we're doing with that pilot with Udacity, is you've got to be in it to change it. And... You don't necessarily need to wait for the Big Bang. New Zealand is totally going to allow badging of competencies assessed by whatever. Because, but you could do it here. So how do you? So part of my bit is um, how do you harness momentum in communities to do some different things? Because then you can get it to tipping point. Then maybe some of those things that worked at the edge become. Um, the pilots for for the future, um, but I I'm very happy putting up put aside your fear, because on that work we're doing, there's plenty of push, I'm going to call it pushback. The pushback, though, if you go <coughs> into it, I I think is often about fear, and it's fear of the unknown. And everyone comes from a place of wanting the best for everyone. No one's trying to have a bad outcome, but a fear, if we went there, would we have given up the opportunity if we'd followed this for, we put our kids through it. So, so for me, it's, it's a fear that we'll, you'll get that inertia. So, you know, I can put it back to you and say, well, if you haven't got any, 
what is the place you get the role you can play in this community to help this conversation go forward um, and and step further into being able to be more responsive to the kids that you and their families that you serve And the other bit that's probably worth talking about is if you look at the era we're in now and started in the IT space and now it's used for innovation, which is, uh, and this is where you have your scrum managers, you know, which is, so what do we think we might do? And there are these things to do, we'll do it and we'll work, we'll work it out and we'll get to that point and we will... We will have achieved that and we can test it. And we can then think, what else do we do? Right, we work really hard and we do that and we test it. So instead of saying, uh, we will invest in, in, uh, in, I mean, I've got an example of uh, the railways in, in New South Wales. The railway said, and this is the paradigm I was brought up. We want to have uh, interconnected information about I leave home, what train, what bus, and I want it real time so that I can decide I could run in my two minutes, catch the bus and connect with the train. The railway did it in, that will take X years, call it six years, that will cost $40 million and that will be for the two main routes that most people use in Sydney. Using the sort of approach of of uh, what could we do, how would we go about it, let's do a bit, then a bit more, and a bit more, that whole agile framework. They, the, long story short, but they did some hackathons and they made all the data available. And for under a million dollars, they had a system up and running that had, I haven't got all, but it was like 85% accuracy. And out of it, it was a learning system. So it became 87, it became 89, it became 90. And so the, the approach that I was brought up in is how would we solve your whole problem for the whole of New Zealand and push the go button on a certain day? And we have no risk of anything going wrong. And that isn't the paradigm we live in now. So coming out of Silicon Valley last week, it's all about what we do next week, we'll do it, we'll have a go. Talk to Peter Cullinane with Lewis Road Milk. He said his most important thing is they get the product, they decide it is superb cream cheese, the next um, sour cream, the next one they're doing. And then if we think it's superb, launch it. And actually if it flops, withdraw it. So... There's a food product that's in this. We, work, we think about the idea, we work really hard, we optimise it, then we get it out and we try it. But we're not fearful that if it doesn't go, well, we will actually take it away. How, um, Lewis Road have only advertised once. All the rest is social media. Lewis Road, have, Peter will say, we could never, ever have existed as a food company without the world we live in with social media. And that, so that's not high-tech robotics. That's a, a food product that was actually competing against giant market marketing. Sorry, I got a bit off track, but it's about the, the, how we work and how we innovate. Yep. Well, well uh, sorry, I, I'm not going to be a parent advisor. Uh, I didn't say have the device all the time. Um, I didn't say that at all. Um, well, I mean, we can get into a really good discussion because um, there is what is your values, your holistic approach to life, what is that, wh how does that look, what does that look like? It's, I've got kids that um, are all in their mid to late 20s now um, who... Uh, I personally went through, and there'd be many could tell the same thing, at somewhere 17, 14 in their era, 14 to 18, getting off a device, getting a conversation, etc., going, uh, was a challenge of parenting and a reasonably unrewarding one, 
you know, because you were just the no, who now have got, but they came in a value set that was wider than that in terms of how they interact with people, how they interact with environment views, and and they gamed, and then they read articles and they watched TED Talks and they, they created a world that wasn't all about at 14 or 16 just about the gaming bit and the texts and the um, so so if you look at it uh, as an individual I'm not fearful of that but I didn't say they can be on their devices all the time you know, but, and that there's about what is, I mean, in behind this, which is another whole topic, another whole topic, lots of research, lots of thinking, what does this mean for humanity? What do we, how do we make communities work? What does it mean for democracy? There's a whole lot of questions that are bigger than that, than just this. Um, so again, I'm not the policy maker, and, but the one, one of those drivers I talked about is the digital world is transferring the power to the individual. So the more the individual has that and uses it, the more pressure they put in on the offerings of anything. So I think that will cause lots of change in lots of places. So you look at the, so I'm not going to answer on education because there are, will it be, are we set, usually the regulators and the policy setters are not ahead of the curve, they follow behind the curve. And they, in all areas, transport, health, education. But as opportunities come and more people want to use it and participate in it, so you think of Uber and Airbnb and the issues on tax and accredit uh, you know, security and registration, the user is pushing the conversation and the need to say, well, what do we do differently and how do we do it? And it's coming fast in health because you look at the technology developments that will empower self-management versus the hierarchical approach we have now. And in behind that is, a, is what are you as an individual allowed to do, not allowed to do? So it will challenge a lot of paradigms, including education. But it will be out of what you described, because it's available and you want and you can see advantage, then the more you do, the more um, um, your university, if it's part of your mix, is prepared to say, OK, I'll let you just enrol in that, because that whole move to consumer centricity and being able to deliver means you've got to be responsive and that then will drive change. There's so much data on me in so many places and every time I walk across this room, I've given away more data because my watch is actually monitoring things and it's connected to Apple and Apple is using that data to do different things. So, and, and you could follow my life all day today if you wanted to find out through all the cameras I would have been uh, uh, involved with. And I was in a shop in San Fran last week called Beta, which is uh, putting out new tech products and the, at, here's the tech product, and here's the iPad, and the shop rents square meter, square, a square meter, $1,500 a month a square meter or something. So, I mean, huge, huge rental. They don't sell, they don't take any clip on the product. Just be with me for a minute. When I'm looking at this product, there are 92 cameras in the shop watching me. 
and there's some that watch me outside the shop to see what I do when I go out. Do I Google and try and find, can I get it directly, what, all sorts of stuff. But more than that, when I'm looking at this thing, there's a little iPad that's telling me that this is a whatever, and it's recognised that I'm an older female. And it has totally brought up different information for me than when you come to look at it. And it's watched, because it's got a camera, what I did with it. So for any of us to think, we're, if, unless we live in the middle of, of Arthur's Pass, um, uh, with, that we're not, data, data about us is everywhere it is. So for me that is. But it's more about what we can choose to do, which is also we give away our data all the time. But we choose to do that. You know, we choose to, uh, we choose. We don't choose to do it, because you may choose not to do it, but you choose. So you have, you are sitting there and um, a new app flips up in the middle of stuff. Guess what? It knows quite a lot about me anyway because it knows how I use it, all the rest. The new app is, says you can do some brain gym. And, of course, brain gym's really good for not getting Alzheimer's, the fear of all of us that are about my age, you know. It's like, oh, that's interesting. Have a wee look. You can do a test with your peers. Bit scary. Oh, I've got 86%. Oh, fantastic. I'm okay. Would you like to do some more advanced one? And here's the science for it. Yep, I'd like to download the app. Bang, it's there. I haven't for a minute thought about what am I giving to someone who it's... it's so what I'm just meaning, I can do that. I didn't have to go to... Any, I could do that in the Cory Club. I didn't have to go to a psychologist. Um, I didn't have to go to anywhere else. I just could decide I'd do it. It could be the crappiest thing, and I don't I haven't even. So I have, I own all of that, but I chose. And and that's, you know, in that, it's it's different. But it, for me, it was an example that that stuck with me because we can all move to the advanced side. But the digitisation helps in everyday life. And in that book I told you about, The New Digital Age, it talked about the woman in the Congo. And all they, they didn't have data, they just had SMS. So the woman in the Congo would go fishing and they'd take the fish to the market and they knew they sold about so many catfish a day. And when SMS came in, the boy went to the market the woman was at the, at the river. The boys had collected the fish into a netted area, and now the person came for the catfish. And the boy texted the people on the bank the catfish and what size, and the other boy ran the fish up to the market. That's empowered by a digital age. And they chose, they would re-engineer their system like that. So we it's that bit about it doesn't matter uh, what you could or couldn't do or what the, the, uh, the, the mafia of the day or that you can break the paradigms and that's what's happening. And the individual chooses, just like um, uh, do you choose to have Uber? Do you choose to go to Uber at Wellington Airport? They can't come into the taxi rank, but we've all got a system of getting them. You know, that's what I mean by it. Yeah. I've got a, a question maybe just to wrap things up and follow up from that one. And maybe, I, I just thought after the US election, maybe there's some good news out there. Uh, who's more powerful? Who's going to influence the world more? Trump or Zuckerberg? Is that his name? The Facebook? Mark. Yeah. Now, who, who is actually going to, going to be the influential one? What do you reckon? <laughs> uh, um, thank you very much. So it's fascinating. It's challenging. Uh, it, it's certainly inspiring. Um, my kids are up there, you might have heard them, and it actually, I think this is a, this is a fantastic, okay? I'm thrilled that my kids are growing up in this yeah. age, actually, so yeah. thank you, thank you very much, we really appreciate your time tonight. Thank you.